everyone. There's my squishy. Squishy, you can join us for the video. Um, I just wanted to check in today and talk about the difference between self-love versus self-care. So um, this was something that came up into my mind um, a few years ago now. Um, back in, I've just written a blog on it, so I'll share that as well. Um, hey, Squishy, say hello to Squishy. Um, back in 2011, I was in a pretty, uh, say hello if you're jumping on. Um, hey, Colin. Um, back in 2007, uh, 2011, um, it was kind of my, I, I moved to Australia when I was in 2010 and to, in 2011, I found myself back in depression for what I thought was the second time, but, um, it was, I think more of a continuation of, Hey Shannon, uh, more of a continuation of the depression that I'd had towards the end of 2010. 2010 was a pretty shitty year for me. I had um, slipped a disc in my back so I couldn't exercise. And exercise was my number one go-to stress reliever at the time. Um, I was in a really toxic relationship that I ended up leaving and all kinds of shit happened as a result of that, which wasn't very good. I was signed off work for four and a half months with my back um, and work uh, was, I was in a job where I was helping people. So suddenly I'm kind of signed off work not hanging out with anyone because all my mates are at work. Um, I couldn't exercise. Um, you know, I was kind of recovering from a lot of different trauma that had gone on for in a, the few years before. And I found myself in depression. I then kind of got over at that, went on a couple of holidays, um, felt like I was back to my old self, moved to Australia. And then the next year, I found myself kind of in limbo. Like, I feel like anyone that moves to a different country ends up kind of with the blues at some point, you know? Um, when you're caught up in all the excitement of moving to a, a different country, and it was a dream of mine for 10 years to move to Australia, um, you're kind of caught up in that whirlwind. But then, you know, a lot of, it's, it's not easy to set up in a new country, no matter how self-sufficient you are. Um, you know, it definitely comes with its challenges. And I found myself um, tree planting for a, a working holiday visa so I, that I could get a visa to stay in the country. I found myself single, so I wasn't in a relationship where I was helping anyone. Hey Nadine, hope you're well. Um, hey Vladimir, um, I, I wasn't in a job where I was helping anyone. I wasn't uh, in a relationship where I was rescuing anyone, which had been my kind of trademark for the few years before that. Um, I was in a new country. I was miles away from all of my best friends and I found myself back in depression. I wouldn't, I don't think as much as I felt like I was back to my old self, I don't think that I uh, had chemically recovered in my brain at that point. And I kind of had a bit of an aha moment during that time where I realized that all of my self-worth, pretty much all of my self-worth came from helping other people. And I realized how that wasn't a good thing. And at the time I kind of um, vowed to improve that for myself, but I think really looking back uh, at what I was doing then, um, I really was only implementing lots more self-care which is a part of self-love, but it isn't all of it. So I focused on that. I got myself out of the black hole, uh, moved on with my life. And then fast forward a few years to 2016, I found myself in an amazing place where I had achieved so many goals. I'd got permanent residency in Australia. I was here to stay. I'd built my first house by the ocean. Um, at that point, I was running my business full time. I was in a really, really good place. But I felt this growing kind of hole in my solar plexus area, which is the home of your confidence and self-esteem and self-worth. And it took a while for me to figure out where that was really coming from. But um, what I realized was that I had all these amazing things in my life and I didn't feel like I deserved them, which was kind of like a news flash to me. Like I didn't really, really understand where that came from. But I... Um, I kind of embarked on what I now call Project Self-Worth, where I made a massive effort to overcome that for myself and to really, really dig a lot deeper into self-love and self-worth and self-esteem than just self-care techniques. So I'll just read out a bit from my blog that I just wrote. Um, so what is self-care? Self-care is the process of taking care of yourself with behaviours that serve your mental and physical health. Things like hot baths, massages, uh, good nutrition, exercise, um, catching up with people that fill up your cup, listening to your body when you're tired and stressed and in need of a break, 
Um, and then self-love is setting healthy boundaries. So saying no when you don't want to do something. Practicing mindfulness, really, really tuning into your body, your emotions, um, not making something wrong because you feel a certain way, but really just tuning into yourself and, and allowing those kind of emotions to be there and letting them process through you uh, rather than acting a certain way or reacting a certain way because of them. Um, feeling into what is a yes for you and what's a no and, and really listening to that. Oops, that's my dog. Um, decluttering toxic environments, people and situations out of your life. Squishy, over here. Come on, come on, you're going the wrong way. Um, Prioritising yourself instead of other people. Making self-care a priority. Losing the need to be busy, rushed and having a never-ending to-do list, which is definitely something that I am still overcoming. I... I think my fiance will attest to the fact that I'm definitely getting better with this and uh, my recent practice of increasing a lot of reading um, is one of those things because I feel like reading for me has always been something I do when I'm on holiday and in relax mode um, and when I've got lots of things on my to-do list I haven't necessarily let myself lay down and read a book so I'm doing more of that. Um, feeling peaceful and content being on your own or having alone time so in the past, if I had a whole free weekend coming up, I would kind of feel like a mini panic inside and call all my mates and organize to basically book out my whole weekend. And these days when I uh, have a whole weekend completely free, even if I've got a Reiki workshop booked up and, and then for some reason it doesn't go ahead. A lot of things are being canceled at the moment because of uh, people testing positive to COVID. Um, like I revel in the fact that I've got a free weekend. I'm, I just think, oh, what can I do for myself this weekend, you know? Uh, like this long weekend, I've got lots of free time. I'm also doing lots of distant healings. I'm teaching Reiki and stuff like that and coaching, but I've also got plenty of free time to spend just with myself and with my dog, doing the things that I really want to do. Um, Self-love is about no longer spending time with people who don't fill up your cup. So really ditching the critical, judgmental people in your, in your life. You know, the people that you, when you spend time with them, you walk away wondering why you had. And you walk away feeling really shitty about yourself. It's Self-love is really about fucking those people off out of your life. Um, it's about speaking kindly to yourself rather than critically. You know, if you think, if that voice in your head that doesn't speak kindly to yourself was an actual person... Would you want to hang out with them all day long? You probably wouldn't. If they said, if a person said some of the stuff that you said, say to yourself, would you just tell them to fuck off and walk away? <laughs> you probably would. Um, it's about accepting yourself fully, even for what you perceive to be your flaws, which can you can turn into strengths. You know, there, it's only a perception that they're your flaws. Um, it's forgiving yourself for past mistakes. That's really, really important and not letting yourself hold on to shame, but really helping yourself to release that from the past. Um, it's being authentically and unapologetically you. You know, uh, are you one of those people that constantly apologizes and says sorry when really there's nothing to say sorry for? Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Just be you, be raw, unfiltered, unapologetically, authentically you. You're going to be like Marmite, like the advert says. You either love it or hate it. I love it. Everyone everyone that knows me knows I love Marmite. Hey, woo, how you doing? Um, so, yeah, just be raw and unapologetically you. Fuck anyone off who doesn't enjoy who you are because there's plenty of people in the world that will enjoy who you are. You've got no need to apologise for who you are. Um, have a high regard for your own well-being. That's really, really important. Take care of your own needs and ditch self-sacrificing behaviours. I was always a massive one for self-sacrificing. I would dive into other people's shit um, like it was a swimming pool, um, especially when I needed my energy the most. I would just dive on in there and, you know, rescue or try and help people who didn't necessarily always want to be helped either. So I stopped doing that. Um, I still every now and again have to catch myself out from doing that, but I'm, I'm a lot better than I used to be. And self-love is also no longer judging yourself. Hey, Tim, how you going? Um, so just reflect on that list. I'm going to post up the blog um, as well with this video. So just have a reflect on that list and really think about what are you doing in your own life? Are you practicing self-care? Are you just practicing self-care and not really self-love? Like, are you 
doing surface level stuff like, you know, taking yourself for a massage or having a bath or, you know, you've got exercise and nutrition down pat, but you speak to yourself like shit all day long and judge everything about yourself. You know, that's not true self-love. You deserve to love yourself. It's not a selfish thing. Um, the more you love yourself, the less you do things. Hey, Kiara. Um, the more you love yourself, the less you do things that are just about people pleasing. You know, you live a much happier, more fulfilled, healthier life. Um, and when you're happier and healthier, everyone around you is um, naturally happier and healthier as well. And if they're not, it probably means they're not supposed to be in your life. So that's what I wanted to check in and say to you today. Squishy is here. <laughs> She's been my little Reiki buddy today. I taught advanced healing techniques and I did a few distant healings and she was being very patient, waiting for me to finish my work. Um, and now I think it's probably time I take her to the park. She's been patiently waiting for me. So whatever you guys are up to this long Easter weekend, I hope you're having loads of fun. I hope you're also um, practicing lots of self-care and self-love and uh, drop me a message in the comments below. Let me know what is your favorite form of self-care and self-love. Probably this weekend it might be stuffing your face with Easter eggs. So enjoy that and I will speak to you soon. Lots of love guys.